In the previous video, The Rise of Private Education in India, we showed that beginning in the 1990s, there was a massive increase in the demand for education, which was met by private schools. So much so that now in India, 27% of the primary age children are in private schools, and in urban regions, it's as high as almost 50%. We also showed that on educational tests, the kids in private schools do better than those in public schools. But the question is, is this because the private schools are better, or is it because they draw from better students? This is the question of cream skimming. It's part of uh, what I look at in one of my papers, and it's what we're going to talk about in this video. Lots of papers have tried to control for cream skimming using American data or data from other countries. But they haven't always convinced the critics. And the reason for this is that when the private schools are just 10% of the market, the kids in the private schools are, in fact, very likely to be different than the kids in the public schools. With only 10% of the market, it's easy to imagine that it's a different 10%. It's the best 10%. Or a portion of it is the best 10%. However, India offers a unique opportunity to test for cream skimming. Because in many districts in India, and these are just a few, a majority of the kids are in the private schools. Well, if a majority of the kids are in the private schools, these kids must be much closer to average because they're the majority. The, if a majority of the kids are in the private schools, they can't all be the cream. That's the intuition. Let's look in a little more detail at a model. Here's a simple model of cream skimming. We're going to make three important assumptions. First, there's some distribution of child ability. Some kids have higher ability than do other kids. Second, we're going to assume that private schools offer no educational advantages. Private schools do not increase ability or testing level any more than do public schools. They are equal. Now, given this assumption, the average ability taken over all children, whether they're in public schools or in private schools, will not vary with the private share. Since private schools offer no advantages over public schools, as we increase the private share, the mean over the entire population will be absolutely fixed. Third assumption, we're going to assume that the private schools draw from the top of the public school distribution, or draw to a greater extent from the top of the public school distribution. With these assumptions, when the private share is low, it's quite easy for the private mean to be well above the public mean, simply because the private schools draw cream skim from the top of the public distribution. Notice, however, that as the private share increases, the private mean must fall and get closer and closer to the population mean. Similarly, since the private schools are drawing from the top of the public distribution, the public mean must fall uh, lower and lower as the private share increases. OK, here's the second model of education, the higher productivity model. In this model, we assume that the private schools are better than the public schools. They actually raise educational uh, quality and achievement. Uh, we're also going to assume that the private schools pull randomly from the public schools. So there's no cream skimming going on in this model. What this means is that when the private share of education is low, the population mean is close to the public mean. As the private share increases, however, and as we get more and more kids entering the better schools, you get an increase in the population mean until, as you get almost everybody in the private schools, the population mean is equal to the private mean. Key here is that as you increase the private share, you get more and more kids in the higher productivity schools, so the population mean increases. Okay, what do the data say? Remember, the cream skimming model says that as the private share of schooling increases, you're just changing how the children are distributed, so there should be no change in the mean score. The higher productivity model says that as the private share increases, you ought to see an increase as you get more and more children into the private sector where the educational quality is higher. So what we see for reading scores is that as the private share increases, the mean reading score increases. 
suggesting higher productivity. Notice, we do not see any big changes in the scores in the public schools. We see a slight decline in the scores in the private schools, suggesting that a little bit of cream skimming may be going on. Nevertheless, we see increases in the mean, which does suggest higher productivity. Now, this is just a crude look at the data. Let's take a closer look to see if we can pinpoint where cream skimming might be occurring if it is occurring. In this slide, we're showing the percentage of children scoring at the highest reading level in the private and in the public schools. And what is very marked here is that as the private share of schooling increases from about 0 to, say, 15 percent, we see a marked decline in the number of children in the private schools scoring at the highest level. So this suggests that cream skimming is going on. When the private share is really low, they really are getting the best of the students. As the private share increases, they're getting a lower and lower quality level of students. However, after about 10, 15 percent, notice that this levels off and that we see no decline in the uh, private share and also no decline in the public share. So what this suggests is that there's a little bit of cream skimming going on when the private schools are small. But once the private schools reach about 20 percent or so, they are drawing randomly from the population and they have greater achievement. The private schools actually are uh, increasing educational quality. I think this story makes a lot of sense. When the private schools are small, of course they draw from the cream. But once the private schools are drawing from over 20 percent of the population, they're basically drawing from the same pool as are the public schools. And what we see is that uh, in the limit, there is a improvement in the reading quality of the kids. The same is also true for mathematics, by the way. So if you go back to the previous video, The Rise of Private Education in India, you'll see that the achievement levels of the kids in private schools are much higher than those in the public schools. What we've seen now is that some of this difference is due to cream skimming, but a modest, nevertheless significant amount is also due to higher productivity in the private schools. And indeed, that shouldn't be surprising. After all, the private schools have lower absentee rates. They have teachers who are actually in the classroom teaching more often. So it makes sense that there would be some difference. How much is this difference? Well, the difference, as I said, is modest but significant. So switching children to private schools would increase by 11.8 percentage points, or 38.5 percent, the number of children who can read at the very highest tested level. Looking at the bottom side, it would decrease, switching kids into the private schools would decrease by about 5 percentage points, or 55 percent, the number of children performing at the lowest tested levels. The same thing is true for uh, arithmetic. Uh, look at the paper for details, but basically switching the kids to the private schools would increase by 30 percent the number of children who can do arithmetic at the highest tested level, and it would decrease by 26 percent the number of children performing at the lowest arithmetic level. Okay. Let's put these results in context. The Indian population is very young, 370 million people, or 32 percent of the population, below the age of 15. What that means is that there's about 100 million children are being educated in private schools. In fact, this is the largest experiment in private education probably since 19th century Great Britain. So how's the experiment going? Well, what my paper suggests, as well as others, is that private schools improve educational performance, modestly but significantly. Even if they don't improve educational performance, even if they're just as good as the government schools, they're considerably cheaper, so that's also a big advantage. Despite the fact, or perhaps because of the fact, that this experiment in private education, which happened spontaneously, which happened from the ground up, which was not driven by government policy, but was a response of the people, was a response of entrepreneurs and the people to the demand for education. Despite the fact that this has gone well, the Right to Education Act of 2009 may threaten this experiment. 
The Right to Education Act imposes conditions on the private schools, many of which do not apply to the public schools. We'll have to see what happens in the future. Here's some further reading. Uh, my paper, of course, I've mentioned uh, James Tooley before and the work with his uh, co-authors, and I've also mentioned Nindan uh, Nilakani's book before. I should also point out that not everybody finds that uh, private education raises achievement levels. There's a paper by Chudgar and Quinn. They find that private and public schools are about the same once you control for uh, selection factors. I actually find this somewhat difficult to believe since we do know that the private schools have uh, much higher, much lower absentee rates. The public schools have higher absentee rates. Nevertheless, they find that once you control for other factors, achievement levels are about the same. However, the private schools are much cheaper than the public schools. So on a productivity advantage, uh, that would still go to the private schools. Kingdon finds, as I do, that the private schools in India do have higher quality and higher efficiency. Thanks very much.